to the Holy Trinity, to Pastor Fields and Sister Thompson, ministers and deacons and uh, officers of this church and to this congregation. I greet you all in divine love this morning. There's a word from the Lord this morning coming from Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. That is Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And for the sake of time, I will begin reading. And this is what it says in Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore, arise. Arise me. Get up. Go over this Jordan. Thou and all this people. You see, some, we don't want to leave any behind. Unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness in this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong. Finish strong. And of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wherever and wheresoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Amen. Have I not commanded thee? <laughs> have I not ordered you? Have I not told you? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. The title of my sermon this morning, since we are in the last month of this year, and we get ready to enter into a new season, into a new year, 2020. And we don't know what's going to happen. But we can face the future. So the title of my sermon this morning is Facing the Future with God. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this day and this opportunity, as always, to deliver your word. Please let it go forth, Lord God, with boldness, so that it will encourage someone, Lord God, and deliver. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, facing the future with God. How many of you would like to know the future? before it even happened. Maybe a good thing. Then again, it may not be a good thing. However you look at it. Because if we could look on down the line in December and into 2020, there may be some conflicts or some problems 
are some things in there that's revealed to us that may scare us. And we don't want to be no scared of Christians. There may be some things and difficulties on down in the years and the rest of this month that may disappoint us. There may be some things that will cause us to just stop. And a lot of us would just stop if we knew the future, if it was not going to be good for us. Not only that, the, uh, know the future, but also if we can do something about it. If we can just look into the future and know that we can do something about it. Yeah, it will save us, some of us, a lot of heartache, save some of us a lot of pain. If we knew that the stock market was going to go up, we would buy low. Sell high and make us a lot of money. If we knew ahead of time that someone was in trouble, would we help them? If we knew someone was in danger and would, lie, and would die, would we try to prevent it? Life here on earth is filled with a lot of uncertainties. Someone once said that if we write the word life, we are also writing the word if. Life, L-I-F-E, if. You see, you can't write that word life without writing the word if, and that just reminds us of the uncertainty of life itself. If I can look into the future, I just want to know who gonna win the election. And if I can stop, it, if it didn't go my way, Pastor, <laughs> no more four more years of 45. But what can we do about life itself? Well, there are three things that God says well, you ain't supposed to do. Right. I'm sorry. Let me change that. Well, there are three things that God says you're not supposed to do. First, don't presume about tomorrow. Amen. Proverbs 27 and 1 says, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Don't go around boasting about your plans for tomorrow, next week, or next year, because life is uncertain. You may not be around that low, so don't be so presumptuous. Most of us assume whenever we do something without even praying about it first. We assume we'll be there to do it. We assume we have the strength to do it, the ability to do it, and even the brain power to do it. As I get older, I see strength going, eyesight going. As we were talking about in Sunday school last Sunday, the inner man, as Sister McDonald would say, or your mind will tell you to do stuff uh, 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 um, that you normally wouldn't do. Yeah, can't your inner mind tell you, you ain't you 18 again. You 19, 20 again. You can do this, you can run. Child, I'm here to tell you. You better come to yourself and listen to your body. See what your body say first. You find yourself in the in the bed, hospital or worse, in that right uh, brother, brother. But when we pray about it, we're asking for God's blessing upon it, searching for his will, his will in all matter. Secondly, don't panic about tomorrow. A lot of folks like to worry about tomorrow. What I'm going to eat tomorrow, what I'm going to put on tomorrow, where I'm going tomorrow. Matthew 6 and 34 says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Worry causes stress. Worry causes high blood pressure and other problems. And thirdly, don't procrastinate until tomorrow. Yeah, we love to procrastinate as a group of people. We love to put off for tomorrow. Well, I'll watch that tomorrow. Well, I go to the grocery store tomorrow. Well, you know, I pay that bill tomorrow, and then by when tomorrow comes, the grace period has passed, and now, you, and now you got a penalty. We always like to put stuff out to why? When you can do it right now. Now, those are the things God don't, doesn't want us to do. These are the things He want, doesn't want us to do when we facing the future. Don't presume, don't panic, don't worry, and don't procrastinate. However, there are three things God wants you to do when facing the future, and they can be found in our text this morning. 
Joshua 1, verses 1 through 9. Here's what's happening in our text. God has freed the children of Israel from Egyptian slavery. But because of their disobedience, they have been wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years. Yeah, they were complaining. You should have left us back in Egypt. Now remember back in Egypt they were slaves, making bricks. Yes. You should have let us die at the Red Sea. God had just delivered the Hebrews, as Sister McDonald would say, from the Red Sea, open up a dry ground, but they're complaining. Now don't, don't get too busy and then say, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them them Israelites, were life, because we just like it. Yep. Yeah. God has gotten us out of one situation, and we're going to church and happy and praise and praise the Lord, and then we get back into some, uh, something else. Oh, Lord, woe is me. Where is God? God, is he going to answer my prayer? God has uh, put food on your table, but when you don't have what you want, I don't want that. When God has healed your body, then you, and then another sickness come along, you're thinking, Oh, I'm about to die. Amen. We're always complaining. Now, finally, the older disobedient generation is gone here in our text. And the younger generation is ready to do what God tells them to do. I wish you were like that now. <laughs> Moses had just died. And now it is Joshua's turn to lead the people. They are on the eastern side of the Jordan River. Now, on the other side is the promised land. Somebody say face in the future. Yeah, some of us are right now on the eastern side of the Jordan River. Yeah, we can't get across it because we got some trials, we got some problems, we got some things that are stopping us. I can see the promised land, I can see my victory, but I got to wait patiently. I got to do certain things before I can get it. Amen. Joshua knows that once they enter the promised land, they will be facing at least seven enemy nations. And these nations are strong, well-trained armies and fortified cities. And they're far better equipped with weapons of war than Joshua's young army. No wonder they were scared. So God appears to him and tells him three things to do to guarantee him success. Let's look at those three things and consider if God may be still telling us Three things to guarantee us success as we, as we face our future today. God says to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. You and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give unto you. I will give you every place where you set your feet as I promised Moses. Sometimes when we have a death in the family, it seems like the whole family becomes disarray. When that one person has gone on, it's the job of the other people to take it up on and move forward. This is what God was telling Joshua. Yeah, Moses is dead, but you've been walking with Moses. You have seen the power of what I can do. Don't stop. Don't sit down. Just keep moving. He said, I want you to possess land. So the first thing God told Joshua to do set my plan into motion. Yeah, Moses is gone, so who's going to take him into the promised land? It's got to be you, Joshua. It's got to be you. But before Joshua could do that, there was something else he had to do. He had to let go of the past. Yes, yes. God began verse 2 saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses was Joshua's mentor. He was Josh, Joshua was uh, God's chosen man to free the people and lead them out of Egypt. He was the one God called to the mount, top of Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments. And now Joshua has to fill his shoes. Yeah, sometimes we got to fill some big right. shoes. Right. <laughs> but I tell you what, God would not call you to do it if he didn't equip you to do it also. Right. Joshua has to take his place. You can't imagine the fear Joshua must have felt. So God wanted Joshua to know that Moses was dead, but God ain't dead. And Joshua's not dead. So grandma or grandpa or whoever has passed on, God's not dead. And you're not dead. Take the, the ram and move forward. So God is looking for some people who are willing. Some people who are able. You may not think you're strong enough. 
enough to do it, but with all things, it's possible with God. And he will strengthen you to do those things. He wanted Joshua to know he had a plan and purpose uh, for Joshua's life and the Israelites' lives, so let's move on with the plan. Somebody say, facing the future. Now in verse 10 and 11, Joshua ordered the officers to go through the camp. Tell the people to get the supplies ready. God has called upon you to go through your family. Tell them about God. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them that they need to know Jesus, accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior right now. Tell them if they're doing the wrong, call it out. If they get mad, they'll get over it. But call it out. Three days from now on, he's told them, you will cross that Jordan River and take possession of the land the Lord God is giving you. Proverbs 16 and 9 says, in his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Another translation says, you should make plans counting on God to direct your path. When we make plans asking God to give us direction, that's called wisdom. When we make plans without taking God into consideration, that's called foolishness. So don't presume, don't panic, and don't procrastinate. Just seek God's direction and his plan for your life in motion. Consult him on every single thing, even the things you think that are small. They ain't small to God. Even when you're putting on clothes, God, what shall I wear tomorrow? God, where shall I eat tomorrow? You like me because I'm not cooking. God, where shall I eat tomorrow? God, what shall I do tomorrow? And if you're fortunate enough and been blessed, God, what vehicle shall I drive tomorrow? And if you've really been blessed, God, where, what vacation, what house shall I live in on tomorrow? Now, the second thing God tells Joshua other than to set that plan into motion to move. Because when you set something into motion, you got to move. Right. Motion means movement. Right. So those people had settled down. They had given up. The leader was dead. And now all they sitting there is fussing and complaining about what they didn't have. About where they couldn't go. About what they couldn't do. Sound familiar? Yeah, I said some things like that myself. But the second thing God tells Joshua to do, now stay in the word. Verse 7 says, be strong and very courageous. Be very careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. God guarantees success if he was very careful to obey the law. He told him not to turn to the left or turn to the right. In other words, don't get sidetracked and don't try to do your own thing. You know we love to do our own thing. God tells us to go right, but now God, you see there's a roadblock down there, but don't you know that God can remove the roadblock? So you go another direction and then you end up lost. God tells you to go talk to this person and tell them about, do you be at, then you start acting just like Jonah. Do you know? I can go down there and talk to him if I'm till mom blue in the face. It still ain't no do them no good. Then you get into trying to judge people. That's what you do when you start to, when God tells you to do something, you do the opposite and you say, well, it ain't no work no way. It's not gonna work in your power. All he wants is a willing vessel that a mouthpiece. Yeah, Moses just gave so many excuses that he couldn't go and tell the people. Uh, in Egypt, let my people go. Tell Pharaoh. You know, God, I, 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 I can't, I can't, 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 can't talk too right. I can't talk right. Uh, I, I stutter. I, I need somebody to go with me. Lord, so when I put the words, you just say what I say. When I sing, everyone with you. But after Moses saw the power of God, Moses got a backbone. He straightened up and he started speaking and telling Pharaoh, "Thus said the Lord." And sometimes he would, he would tell Pharaoh some stuff the Lord hadn't even told. Like when Pharaoh told, Pharaoh told him to leave and I won't see your face no more. But Moses said, okay, fine with me. And when Pharaoh told him, say, you got to leave these animals. And so Moses told him, we're not going to leave now one horse. Yes, God will give you that holy bone. When you stay meditating on his word day and night, when you 
obedient to him, when you have faith in him, it don't care if you can't talk. If your tongue get twisted sometimes, that's an excuse. He don't care if you're scared to get up in front of people and talk. That's an excuse. Stop giving excuses. Like I tell my children at school, I don't want to hear any excuses because an excuse ain't nothing but a lie. <laughs> so stop lying. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yeah, sometimes we get sidetracked in our lives. God promote us on our job. Yeah, we live in large now. God, uh, even, if, even if he promised us promotion, some of us will be like, I'm about to blow up now. Yeah, when we blow up, yeah, get too busy. Mm-hmm, get too busy too. Study his word, get too busy to pray, get too busy to go into God's house with God people, get too busy to hear the word of God. You know, you don't you can turn on TV now and hear, but then you find something else you want to look at on TV. Oh, I know that was wrong. Let me get off this 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 TV and let me get on something else and find something else and look at. Let me let me get off of TV Jakes. Because you know you're not, you know, since you have blown up. According to you, you blown up. Yeah. Now you got busy. Sometimes it's a hobby. We get so caught up in that hobby that we no longer have time for God. Or maybe it's a new marriage or a new relationship. Yeah, we got that boo now. Got that boo thing. Child, the boo thing don't go to church, so I'm going to stay at home with my boo. And you such and so much in love and spend so much time with that person that you got no time left over for God. You and your boo need to be in church. And then we get too busy that we can't even focus on our ministries. We can't even focus on our family. We can't even focus on our friends. In verse 8, God said, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will prosper. <laughs> And, and be successful. In that verse, God just told Joshua three ways to stay in the Word. First, talk about the Word. Don't let the Word of God depart from your mouth. It's not enough just to read the Word, but you need to talk about it too. You can't go around and say, well, I read the Word, but what did it say? Well, uh, you know, wait a minute, let me look it up. No, you need to read it and study it. Let it get down in it. In it. That's why I enjoy Sunday school so much. I love to hear Sister McDonald. I love to hear the, the, the people in the classes talk about the word. I miss Mother Mayfield so much in Sunday school because she's going to tell you the truth about that word and put in her own little spin on it too. But it be the truth. We have fun talking and learning about the word. So we need to sit down and talk with each other about the word of God and how he's working it out in our lives. Then God said, think about it. Not only talk about it, but think about it. That means meditate on it. Meditate on it day and night. Know what God is requiring of you. Know his promises. Third, God told Joshua, be careful and do everything that's written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. You have to know God and you have to know the word to be successful and to be prosperous. Now, some people are successful and prosperous. They're they not, they not God led off. But it won't last. Only the things you do for God will last. Someone, uh, te take the teachings and principles of the word and apply them in your everyday life. Someone says sin will keep you from reading the Bible. Yeah, I agree. But reading the Bible will also keep you from sinning. Not only did God tell Joshua to set his plan into motion, and to stay in the word, but also he told them, step out in faith. Yeah. Faith is an action word. You must believe and put it into action. Faith without works is dead. You must say, not only do I believe in, your, in you, Lord, but I trust my life to you, and I will yeah. follow as you yeah. lead me. Yeah. This is the kind of commitment God wanted from Joshua. And this is the kind of commitment God wants from us. Amen. You see, between him and the promised land was the Jordan River at flood stage. Joshua tell, God tells Joshua three times, be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and courageous. Pastor just told you, 
Finish strong. Finish strong. Don't look at what life has in front of you. Don't look at life with your uh, uh, physical eyes, but look with your spiritual eyes. Don't be terrified. Don't be discouraged for the Lord your God will be you with you wherever you go. You see, Satan wants to keep you terrified. Yeah. Satan wants to keep you discouraged. Yeah. And he uses this on us all in all the time. Fear. That's what he wants to give us. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. But fear will keep, uh, keep you in the desert. Fear will keep you in Egypt. The children of Israel could have traveled to the promised land in 11 days. But they were also, they were there 40 years because they were disobedient and they were caught up in fear. If you're scared, you ain't no never do nothing. Some people so scared, they can't even go outside their house. They can't open the crack, open that door and take one step out. Cause they scared something out there gonna get you. If something wanna get you, it break in and get you anyway. God had already brought them out of Egypt. He already led them across the Red Sea. Now they faced with another river, the Jordan River. But as soon as the priests, as soon as they did what Joshua told them to do, and the priests stepped into the water, God piled the water up in the heat and allowed them to cross. Just trust God and let him direct your path. Yes, yes. God has already defeated sin and given us the victory. Uh, we can, and we can do things through Christ which give us strength. We can overcome every obstacle and every circumstance that comes our way. Yes, we can overcome illness. We can overcome death in our family. We can overcome failure. We can overcome unemployment. We can overcome depression and heartache and pain. We can overcome sickness and disease. Remember, just to put God's plan in motion, don't you stop just because somebody else has stopped and sat down. Don't you sit there just because somebody else decided, oh, I'm not going to move today. We'll do it tomorrow, Karen. No, move. Don't you stop your ministry. Don't you stop serving. Don't you stop doing what you're supposed to do. Because somebody decided they're going to sit out. Remember to put God's plan in motion in your life. Stay in his word night and day. Even if you have to listen to it on tape. There's no, if you can't read it, listen to it while you're washing dishes, washing clothes, driving down the highway. And step out in faith. Don't you be scared. What God has promised you, you still got 30, 30 days to do. You still got 30 days to do it this year. You're not over yet. God will keep his promise. God will tell you just like he told most. Move. Put that plan in action. Move. Go forward. And every promise he has told you, you will get it. But you got to step out in faith. Don't be afraid to face the future and whatever has to come up in this, the rest of December and the year 2020. Facing the future with God and you will never lose. You will always win, win, win. And I hope you've been blessed by the